This is a really hard time for people who felt and experienced marginalized behavior and pain before. All of that has just become more acute now. The pandemic has caused a lot of changes for us. We have seen our volume grow 40% since the start of COVID. We can handle more, so text us. Have you seen any, you know, dramatic changes in who's using the service or, you know, what they're using it for? So the age has shifted from under 18 to between 18 and 35. Um, those are the people who are finding their lives most disrupted right now. They've moved back home or they find themselves quarantining alone or their job has changed or school has changed. We've seen so a huge rise in anxiety a huge increase in financial issues, worried about being homeless, about losing jobs, about financial ruin. We have a ton of young people who are texting in about their parents who are on the front lines and are essential workers, and they're very worried about them. But the most fascinating thing, I think, is that the frontline people themselves who text in are worried about getting the virus, are worried about their own financial position, but the thing they're worried about most is giving the virus to their other family members. The whole idea of social isolation is safety and protecting yourself and protecting those around you. But when social isolation is actually more dangerous, how do you go about helping someone in that situation? Quarantines are hard. It may be unsafe for individuals who are LGBTQ and sheltered with people who are homophobic. If you're someone with substance abuse issues and you can't get to your regular care, to an AA meeting in person, and now the impact of the quarantines themselves have caused a 74% increase in domestic violence conversations and a 48% increase in sexual abuse conversations. There are a lot of people who are quarantined at home with abusive people. We can be there with you in that moment because it's text, because it's quiet, because nobody hears you. We take our high-risk people, and on average of about 22 seconds. Oh, wow. So you just text 741741 in the U.S. or Canada. The first thing you see is an automatic message back that says, thanks for reaching out, and gives you a link to our terms of service and privacy policy. And the second thing you see is a question. What's your crisis? And we just get right into it. There's three lines of defense on the other side. The first is the algorithm that ranks you in the queue. The second is that amazing empathetic crisis counselor who will handle your conversation. Every message you send back and forth with will be with that human. And the third is with a supervisor who has a master's degree in a relevant field and they're watching all the conversations in real time. So you actually have a team, a team helping you out. So you are really not alone. And so who um, primarily was using the service in the beginning? Crisis Tech Line has always skewed young, poor, rural, and diverse. From the day we launched, the top five issues that we saw were relationships, depression, anxiety, suicide, and self-harm, in that order. We're seeing some things that are hopeful talking in smaller time frames, like saying, what are you going to do tonight? What's your plan for tomorrow to stay strong? Just thinking about this one day at a time really works. We just want to reach more people. We want more people to know that we're here and available and no crisis is too small. Mm -hmm.